Okay, in this video, I wanna show you guys how to wind a bobbin. The first step is to get some thread and make sure you thread the thread up through this tall, I don't even know what it's called, stand. So let me go ahead and do that. My rule of thumb is to thread from back towards the front. Okay, the next step, the thread should come straight down. And then we're gonna thread, there's a stationary hole here. We'll put it in the hole. And then now we need to thread this little tension disc. If you notice, there's two discs, kind of like two plates. They're hold, held together by a spring. We can obviously tighten or loosen our tension, but usually it's fine. The trick is the thread has to go in between the two plates. So I'd like to zoom in on that. So again, once the thread goes to the stationary hole, it comes in between the two tension discs. And you should notice that there, see how there's a, it's so hard for my big fingers in the way, but there's two little plates. It needs to go in between those plates and then pull it so it's tight and it's really in there. I think what a lot of beginning students do is they just kind of like, oh, there we go and it's not really clicked in. Or maybe they click it around the spring or they click it on the side, but um, it's not gonna wind tight and smooth and straight without the tension. So it's real important to get it in between those two little plates. And sometimes I hold my finger here on the, the thread from the, um, whatever you call it, the, um, ah, on the spool and then I can pull the thread tight and it really kind of clicks in there. After the thread is in the tension disc, then you pull it straight out and now's a good time to actually put it inside your bobbin. Okay, so the way I like to pin the bobbin is I kind of start here in the middle and I put it to go out through one of the little holes. Dun, 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 dun. Here we are. When it's put in this way, then this thread will wind around the spool and then I can hold the little extra and hopefully that will rip off. So this is how you want to get it in. And then the next step is to put your bobbin on this post. Just kind of squeeze it on. Cool, and then I'm gonna hold this thread straight. Again, once it starts, hopefully eventually it just rips off. That would be great. Now we don't want our bobbin to come flying off and hit our neighbor in the face. So there is this little button you push, and you can see it made this lever kind of go up, so it won't come off, and it's also a sensor, so it'll know when your bobbin is full and when you can you know, stop winding it. So you're gonna hold this tight, and you're almost ready to wind. Before winding your bobbin, it's a really good idea to take out the thread from your needle. So I like to lift up my presser foot and pull out my thread and sometimes I just kind of pull it out all the way. I'm just kind of move it out of the way, um, just so it doesn't try to like cause a jam or anything. It can just be a little bit of trouble. And now I'm ready to just hold my thread tight and I can put my foot on the accelerator. I should turn on my machine though first. On, holding thread tight. Flooring it. Needle's going crazy, but there's no thread. Meanwhile, it is spreading so nicely. Notice how my thread is going back and forth, back and forth. My thread looks really tight. Up here, it's like kind of crazy. If you kind of watch this part, it's all crazy and crazy. But then once it goes through the tension disc, it's all nice and tight. So if you're threading it and it's crazy, here, then that means it probably didn't get in the tension disc the right way. Well, it stopped threaded all by itself because the sensor could tell it was full. So now all I have to do, pull it off, voila, and I have a wound bobbin.